Welcome once again to another lesson on the Yalak Emma channel, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon. My lesson today is from the Anatomy of Change series of lessons, and it is titled Walking with God. The date of this recording is March 4th, 2021. So, walking with God. As we go through our lives facing different challenges, different fears, a lot of uncertainties throughout life, we often face great challenges in our minds that stay there even when an outward challenge disappears. So I've got some scriptures here to read to help us along the way in this life. And I hope you will review these different verses from time to time as you refresh yourself with what the scriptures teach. Psalm chapter 17 verse 5. Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. Now I want to show in this lesson something I've been dwelling on this week that's pretty interesting because sometimes when we hear about walking with God, we just kind of gloss it over and just move on fast and uh, we don't really always dig into what it means. But if we look actually... In verse 4, from Psalm chapter 17, it says, Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. So, there seemed to be a path that would have one encounter what the destroyer is doing. But he's saying by by words that would have to be by what's coming from the Most High. And then now in verse 5, he says, Hold up my goings in thy paths. Now, in thy paths, it means a track, an entrenchment. So it's like something is dug out or marked out and created to... To have him travel along. This is the Most High that set up this track for him. So when you deal with anatomy of change, it's about moving into change and getting to where you should be in this life as you go through this life. And it's the Most High that the psalmist here is saying that he trusted as he kept moving through this life. So if there is something dug out and set, and it's in thy paths, in the Most High's paths, that means this is not a path that the destroyer dug out for him to walk. It's a path that the Most High dug out, an entrenchment. So it's like he is set in this path, and he has to make effort, because it says entrenchment, to get out of it. So, if one is honestly trusting in the Most High, it's not that easy just to go astray and not even realize that you are going astray. I mean, if there is a trench that has been dug out and you are walking in it, So it is going to be a little bit lower than the surface of the surrounding ground. It's going to take you a little effort to get out. So you are going to be aware. Now, when you keep the word of the Most High in your heart with honesty, like David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I should not sin against you. When you keep that word with honesty inside your heart, then... 
you're staying in that track much easier and you will be able to tell that there is some resistance in your walk as you try to get out of that path and climb out of the trench and you know this is this is wrong something is wrong with this something doesn't feel right like when someone's pulling you the wrong way telling you to do something and that usually comes from a, a negative environment a bad environment where there is some kind of confusion or bad teaching and so on that would lead people astray and so you know and that can come with a little bit of pressure as well and so you are being forced or coerced to climb out of the path because staying in the path the most high has chosen for you which is just going to bring blessing in your life it should be a little easier not that people are going to come at you but i mean it should be easier inside your heart to remain in that part in, in that uh, path because it's like david said you know you leadeth me by still waters so that's there's going to be that stillness where you are resting in the most high's word that's what keeps you secure in the path no matter what's going on around you psalm chapter 18 and verse 36 thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip now look at this the most high dug the trench and scraped out the path so the person who is in that trench of anatomy of change they're walking the way the most high wants them to walk he has mapped out this path for them to walk so he the most high chose the path dug out a trench for you to walk in and he planned this all from beginning like he said to jeremiah before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee now when you look in creation god knows how the stars would be situated in the sky and the sun and the moon you know how they would move in the sky he knows which tree will grow where and how tall they would grow and so on and what fruits they would pick up so he knows all this stuff before he created them he knew these things and along with that knowing comes a, a mapping out of the life of these different creatures and other parts of creation the trees and so on and whatever is in the sky the luminaries the path that they would take so he, he in his knowing he plans out how they will all function and how the rivers will, will will move on the earth and that comes from out of his knowing now in your life like he said to jeremiah it's the same for you that before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee now with the knowing thee when he says that to jeremiah that means he planned out in jeremiah's case that he would be a prophet so just like he knew that he would make a son and he mapped out a path for the sun in the sky it's the same way he knew jeremiah before jeremiah was formed in his mother's womb and mapped out a path or dug out a trench a way that jeremiah would walk and walk right into being a prophet and walk out that kind of lifestyle so now when you look at your life and you're dealing with anatomy of change how you're going to proceed through this life to get to where god wants you to be every day because it's not just a future thing like oh in 50 years i'll get there it's an everyday thing because you see your destiny is not where you are going to end up it can't just be that alone but your destiny has to be where you are today and where you're going to be tomorrow as well not just the 50 years from now the 30 years from now your destiny is about today and it's about tomorrow when you get up out of your bed destiny is that close destiny is that close and that's built into this whole anatomy of change kind of thinking because when you understand that your destiny is not just 20 30 years from now but it is about what you do today 
and tomorrow and where you are today and where you will be tomorrow. You don't just allow anybody to teach you any old deception that's been floating around and thrown around for a thousand years or more to deceive people. You don't allow people to teach you out of your destiny, out of your trench, out of the way of the workings of change or the anatomy of change in your life, the constituent parts of change. You don't allow people to just take that out of you and to force you into being someone else. Or you will never get there. Or you will never get there where you're supposed to be. But you would understand that if destiny is about now, the choice I make today and the choice I will make tomorrow, the path I will walk tomorrow and the path that I'm already on right now, you will understand that when a deceiver comes to teach me something deceptive, and I'm sitting before this person and learning from them. And like you would be able to tell, because there's honesty in your honesty in your heart toward the creator, you will be able to tell that something is wrong with what they are teaching. If your doctrines are not right and you know that it's not right, or you are troubled by it, you should address that within yourself. Because you want honesty throughout all your walk with the most high. This is the lesson walking with God. There must be honesty on your path. So now he says, Thou hast enlarged my steps. Enlarge, so increase my capacity. Make it bigger. So you're not going to stay the same place every day. You're not going to just have the same capacity every day. You will grow and have change in your life, be able to take on more and more things, bigger things, and things that allow you to express in your destiny. And that's why if you are, if you are being enlarged, you will express destiny all the time, daily. It's not the case where you're going to be expressing destiny in 20, 30, 40, 50 years when you get very old or even much older you will express destiny where you are because destiny is not a place you are going to. It is something you are living. You are living in destiny right now. It's not a place you will get to. It's where you are right now. It's what you are doing right now. And that's why you need to fine tune and so on and need to make corrections to where you are right now if something is wrong with where you are right now. Like if something is in your shoe, like a little pebble in your shoe, it's going to cause problems on your destiny as you go through that trench, trench or that path. So you need to address that right now because you are in destiny right now and something is bothering that destiny, bothering that walk. So you need to address it. And so when someone comes teaching you some wrong things, you know, because the Bible says the most I desire is truth in the inner part. So if you are sitting under a lot of false doctrines, it's going to trouble you. And you don't know what you are missing that would be, that's supposed to be part of your destiny that would help you make it to the next t stage to be enlarged. Like he says, thou has enlarged my steps. You don't know the false doctrine teaching that you're sitting under what it will prevent from coming in your life to expand or enlarge your destiny, but yet you keep reading, thou has enlarged my steps. Then if you don't adjust the false doctrine, get out from under it, clear it up or whatever, then you're just reading the book without believing the book. Because you don't understand how the book works. So he says here, enlarge. It means to grow, grow large. So something is changing as he is in destiny, but going, going through changes in his destiny. Wow. See, they said destiny, and the destiny thing was for another lesson, but let's just run with it a little bit here. The destiny they told us was to get there. So the destiny... 
is actually going through changes, but we always thought that destiny was this one idea, this one plan we had, and when we are good enough, we will get there when we are older. But destiny is not being good enough one day. Destiny goes through changes, so you hear my title for this series, The Anatomy of Change, because destiny is not a one idea thing, when I'm good enough at this, when I become a professional at that, when I get there in 20, 30 years, then I will live in destiny. Destiny is not a one-time thing. For one. Destiny is going through changes right now as you flow from change to change, as you grow and enlarge, as you enlarge yourself, destiny is something that is vibrant and it keeps moving, it keeps changing, it keeps going on and on and on. And so it moves you into different things. That's why he said, I'm in this path, you've got me entrenched in this path and I'm walking this path because my steps are mapped out by the Most High. And so while he's in that entrenchment, he is in destiny because God will never set any path for him that is not about destiny. And the destiny is vibrant, it's always changing. So as he takes every step in that trench or in that path, walking in the path of the Lord, he is going through destiny changes every step he takes. That's why even in his own life, David, you see the different things he did, like, you know, he was fighting the bear and so on, and... Um, the lion and the bear, and uh, then he took on Goliath eventually. And well, before that, in Samuel's time, he came to get um, anointed and chosen to be king. And uh, then another point now, he was playing music for, for King Saul. And then later on, as the story picks up, he was now a real solid army man, and then eventually as time goes on, he was just king. So you see the different things in David's life. It's not like he sat down and said, God told me, or somebody prophesied to him either, either and say, in 30 years, you're going to be this king over Israel. And so he has this picture in his mind, this idea of being king one day. That's my destiny in this life. No, destiny was what he was living at every stage in his life, every point in his life. He kept taking a step and all the steps in the path as he walked with God, all the steps were steps of destiny. He was in destiny while he was king and before that he was in destiny while he was playing music to calm down Saul and he was in destiny when he was the army man he was in destiny when he was fighting Goliath he was in destiny even before that when he was chosen and anointed by the Most High through Samuel and then even before that when he was younger he was in destiny when he was fighting the lion and the bear in those earlier stages when it was just a lion and a bear, not even any real people he's dealing with. So something that did not seem like it was something kingly to fight lion and bear. So you, that was still part of his destiny. So you think now that just because, you know, just because you are sitting under a wrong teacher or you have lost your job and now you have to do this or they ship you off here and there and transfer you to whatever or something else has brought some kind of chaotic thing in your life, you feel that you are doing something different from what you should be doing, but you can still be in destiny. You see, if David had known from he was fighting the lion and the bear on that day when he was younger that I'm supposed to be king and I got to struggle and battle for my life, this lion and this bear might kill me. So I, you know, and he's there screaming, crying out to the Most High to save him from this lion and the bear. But that was a destiny moment that he fight the lion and fight the bear. So you can be fighting in a situation right now in your life and don't understand that you are not waiting for destiny. You're not trying to survive this to get to destiny. You are in destiny while you fight that situation right now, while you move through because you are taking another step even though you don't know. You figure I'm just held back. You figure I'm just caught 
back, my back against the wall. You are in destiny. Because I told you destiny is not a place you're getting to. It is not a picture on the wall that you envision one day I'll get there. Destiny is what you are doing right now. And in the path to destiny, as you go through destiny, you might have to fight that lion and that bear. You are in destiny as you listen to this right now. Even if this lesson is five years old when you are hearing it, you are in destiny. It will be your choice what you do with it in terms of how you let things play out with your life. You can follow the Most High or you can resist. But the Most High, since he entrenched stuff, those who are honest with him in his heart, in their hearts, it don't matter where they run because the honesty in their hearts. See, when you are not honest with the Most High, then you can get out of place. But the one who is honest now, that one will not escape destiny. Like David said, even if I make my bed in hell, thou art there. Even if I make my bed in the lakes of fire, in the lake of fire. He's saying basically, my destiny is still down there because I will be sleeping and resting in the very presence of God. And where have you known the presence of God to be with people who love him? And they are not moving toward destiny. Because destiny comes out of the very presence. So if thou art there with me in hell, I'm resting in the presence of that brings destiny to begin with. So he says, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. So now, when you are honest like that in your heart toward the Most High, and you just ignore all the false teachers that are out there because your heart will tell you that they are, something is wrong with them, even if you don't figure it out on day one, you're eventually going to get it because there's honesty between you and the Most High. See, those are the ones the Most High is looking for. There's honesty in their heart. So because you are relating to the Most High based on honesty, then He sets it so that your feet does not slip. Slip where? Slip out of the truth. Because that's what's going to keep you stable and keep you moving from point A to point B. Don't matter that it looks like they're winning or that they're winning against you. He says your foot did not slip. Now let's move on to Psalm 37 and verse 23. This is a popular verse. You used to hear this one a lot in the Christian church. Look at what it says. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. We used to sing this song in the choir in Jamaica when I was younger. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. And I didn't understand it, you know. I thought it just meant serving the Lord or just being a Christian, living right. You just going to church. But here it's talking about moving through life. So obviously in this life we are trying to get somewhere. And that somewhere has everything to do with God. It comes out of the mind of God. And no matter what we go through in this life, it still leads back to where it starts. You are always in the mind of God. That's why the scripture says, this talks about the Most High saying, I've engraved you in the palm of my hand or something like that. So basically, he has you on his mind all the time. So your path is in the mind of God. That's why if you're not spending a lot of time with the Most High, with inner reflection and so on, how are you going to make it? People are going to take advantage of you and trip you up and so on. You're going to be stumbling, falling a lot because you're, you're, you're not connecting with the path by connecting with the Most High. You're not staying with it. So the steps, what, what, what comes to mind when you deal with steps? It's just when you're walking, it's just the movement of one foot after another. So now... When you're walking with God, 
as is the title of this lesson in this Anatomy of Change series, he's saying here that this movement of one foot after another, when I put one foot in front of the other and then the other foot in front again and so on, as I walk, the very movement that each foot does, if it is done by a good man, those steps are ordered by God. Ordered. Ordered. So, ordered, the Hebrew word kun, it says to be firm, stable, established. So, this is basically saying, and it also says prepared. So, the steps of that kind of person, the person who is honest in their heart with the Most High, not a lying, deceiving kind of person, but the person who is honest in their heart, the person who is honest in their heart with the Most High, their steps have been prepared, ordered by the Lord. The steps are ordered by the Lord. They have been prepared, established, set firm. In other words, the Most High has fixed it in his mind this is the path this person will walk I will dig out that trench for them to make them walk in it and I'm going to dig out a trench to make sure that they don't wander easily like they're walking on flat road but it's a trench so it takes them some effort to get out so if they're trying to get out of the trench they will know that they're getting off the path and the effort is there to let them to help them keep on the path because it will just naturally let them know I'm putting an effort to climb out of this. That means I'm getting off the path. And that's what you feel when somebody's teaching you lies. The effort it takes in your mind to become comfortable with what they're teaching you is letting you know that your heart is being drawn away from truth. Because the most time is helping you to stay in the trench, in that path that he dug out. But the steps of a good man are ordered, which means they are arranged for you in your life. That's why I told you you're in destiny right now. Because you are already doing the thing that was arranged for you. Like Job says, he performeth the thing that is ordained for me or prepared for me, something like that he says. And many such things are with him. So he has ordered your steps or he has set destiny. And you are walking in it. It is arranged. And it is arranged as a step-by-step -step thing. So that destiny is what you are on now. Because remember I went through it already earlier. That destiny is about change, growing into change. To do that enlarging, like he says, enlarge my steps. So destiny is about change as you live every single day. And we saw the destiny play out through changes in David's life, as I mentioned earlier. Way, uh, uh, earlier. So, so when he says the steps of a good man are ordered, that means the steps you take as you go through this life, they are prepared for you. When I left the Christian church, then I came to the Hebrew Israelite stuff. I was just looking for the Most High, and this sounded really good. So I thought it was the truth, and I was like, yeah, and it was just like Hebrew is like everything. That was just everything to me now, and so on. And then I got seriously disappointed by some of the ridiculous stuff that was going on there with some of the things they were teaching. But I don't curse it now as saying that was a complete waste of time. In some ways it was, but in the grand scheme of things it was not. Because it was destiny. It was the arrangement of my steps to walk out of the childhood thinking and the Christian teachings and as I grew up and to walk out, I took another step into Bible college when I was in the Christian church and then I took another step into ministry. I was a system pastor for a little bit, twice. In my Bible school days, I was learning and training and whatever. So I took different steps along the way and then stepped out of Christianity 
uh, stepped out of church going, I should say, didn't go to church for a long time, maybe nearly four years or whatever it was, then went back to church because I was still looking for God, and then stepped back out of that eventually into the, the Hebrew Israelite stuff because I was just looking for God because destiny was working in me all the time. All the time. Destiny was there. And so with that destiny that was working in my life all those years, I wasn't doing this, what I'm doing right now, to teach this stuff, to help so many people see these things. I wasn't doing that. But were those things, were those different steps I took along the years a waste? No, they were all a part of destiny. Because you can't climb a ladder to get to the top if there is no bottom of the ladder. You are getting somewhere. Ladder climbing is not just at the top when you're trying to get up to the roof. Ladder climbing is all the way from the bottom. So these are like the steps of destiny. The whole ladder is the whole destiny. It's the whole experience you are going through. So all the steps I took over the years to get into walking into Hebrew is like then uh, teaching. Then I walked and stepped again out of those basic Hebrew Israelite teachings because they were not enough to feed me for what the most I wanted to do in my life. So I walked out of those teachings and walked right into my own teachings that the most I was working on in my heart. And through all that stuff, I walked into another part that was bigger and enlarged in my destiny in this life. And it's happening before you right now. The steps of destiny when you're walking with God. And not to be of change. He's going to lead you step by step along the way. So the steps are arranged. He arranged it. You walk out of this. You walk out of that. Walk through that Bible college. And then you walk out of that. You walk into this. You walk into that. And and some of the lessons I've taught, you know, even in the, the, the speaking in tongues and so on. Some of the stuff that I taught in those lessons in the New Testament is fake series to expose the New Testament by going through the upper room, day of Pentecost, outpouring, and so on. Um, I did not know those things at the time when I was in Bible college. But while there, I walked through Bible college and walked through uh, a really good teacher, um, and they gave me all this knowledge about um, the upper room outpouring and the history of it and so on, and then walked out of that setting and so on, and he just stayed there for years like David fought the lion and the bear, and that experience just stayed there until he needed it for bravery to fight um, Goliath. And so all that knowledge of the upper room outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and so on, it was there I learned it in detail from way back then, long before Hebrew Israelite stuff, long before I left the Christian church. But I walked through all of that, and now I came to a time in my life when I could draw and back on that and teach the history of the outpouring in Pentecost and show that the New Testament is fake and God never sent no Holy Spirit down on the day of Pentecost. But had I not walked in destiny through all that time and gone through all that teaching and so on and studying, I would not have been prepared and know how to do it. It probably wouldn't have even come to my mind. It would not come to my mind, and I still have more lessons to do on that upper room stuff to expose the New Testament. So you see, when I say you are walking in destiny, your steps are arranged, the steps of a good man are ordered. He has planned out the steps. So where you are walking is where the Most High wants you to walk as long as you are being honest in your relationship with Him, right? And so I was walking in destiny way back then when I was younger in Bible college and didn't know. I was walking in destiny even though I was in a wrong religion. I was walking in destiny even though the Christian religion was not of God. I was in a wrong place, a wrong setting, but right smack dab in the middle of destiny. So don't despise the day of small beginnings or small things like the Bible says. Because you just never know. You can be, like I heard someone say, it can be the worst of times, but it can be the best of times. You never know what you are going through today, how it is happening to you, and so on, is going to play a part in the rest of your destiny. It could be the base that you will rely on for another part of your destiny. The whole thing is just the whole house of destiny that you are in. 
you're in one room in experiencing certain stuff in your destiny. You're in the kitchen experiencing certain stuff in your destiny at a certain part of your life. In another part of your life, you're in the living room doing something else. And so, and so each different room or compartment in your life is like a different part of your destiny, and they all tie together to have you own living in that house, have the full experience of living in that house. Because now as I teach this stuff and I will learn and grow even more as the years come, as I as I go through all these teachings, I'm realizing now that the whole set of my teachings now is like a house I am living in, a house full of knowledge and experiences that that I was living in all the years of my life when I was in the Christian church from I was a small boy on the on the, the Alpha and Omega choir as a little boy in Jamaica and so on and uh, learning to teach Sunday school for the first time as a 10-year-old and stuff like that, because I'm coming from way back then in church, right? Learning to teach Sunday school and so on. So so everything I did and learned and so on, it was like me being in different rooms or compartments of my destiny, but I didn't draw on them yet at that time, because I was just like, it's like when David was fighting the lion and the bear. It wasn't time yet to utilize the skill and the bravery and the know-how and, and the wisdom of how to fight a terrible uh, foe. But he pulled on it, he drew on it when it was time to face Goliath, and he says, yeah, I can do that. So, so everything I was experiencing was me in destiny, just like a fighter, just because he hasn't fought his, the, the master fight yet. When somebody comes to attack his, the kingdom and he has to defend the king, just because he hasn't fought that big main fight yet to save the king, doesn't mean that he was not in destiny when he was in training, because it was his training all along all those years that would let him win the fight. He was in destiny from day one in training. And, and after his training was done and he kept training himself now and practicing and refreshing himself every day, getting better at it, learning wisdom and skill with the sword and so on, his, his, he, he was still in destiny, but nobody was training him anymore. He was just now practicing every day. That was all destiny steps that he was taking toward the main fight that would come later on when the kingdom got attacked. And so everything that he was doing was him being all in all in destiny. You are in destiny right now. And if you allow the wrong people to teach you, they can shift you and knock you right out of your destiny. Be careful who you learn from. Not everyone is sent by God to build you. Some people are there because they are trying to tear you down, right? Like, like they love to say, people love to say, some were sent, but others went. So some people aren't called by God to build people and to teach people and so on and whatever. Some people are working for somebody else and doing something else, their own agenda and so on. So be careful. So the steps now are ordered. They are arranged. Your steps are arranged. You cannot be in the steps of the Most High, the path, and end up in a place where it just don't matter. That's just what you might be telling yourself, but like David did, he encouraged himself in the Lord. you got to encourage yourself in the Most High to deal with that stuff. Because if your steps are ordered, it's going to come down to how you approach the thing, how you approach this next step. Oops, I just stepped right here and this doesn't feel good. What did I step in? You're looking down on your foot. It's how you respond to it that will determine what your next step is like. And you have to respond to it knowing you are still in the path of the Most High. That's why he says now, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Delight, yes, why? Because this is all about the destiny that the Most High has planned. Let's jump to another verse here. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Oh, goodness, didn't I just tell you all this? A man's heart can think and plan his own stuff, but the Lord directeth, but the Lord directeth 
It sounds like a good idea what they told you, so you run with it or you come up with an idea. But the Lord directeth. That's why sometimes you plan certain stuff because you are devising your own plan and that looks good. Everybody goes to school for a certain numbers of number of years and everybody does this, everybody does that, and you go in the same way and everybody's moving over there and everybody's leaving town and going over there. Everybody's taking that job at that part of the city and so on. Everybody is doing this, doing that, whatever. And so you just devise and plan your own way based on what everyone else is doing in this life. Because because you are expected to. You are cultured in your country that you live in to live a certain way, to do a certain thing, to think a certain kind of way. But the Lord directed his step. So no matter what you think, no matter what the culture of your country, where you live and so on, the Lord directed his steps. And sometimes there is a battle between what you have planned or how you have been cultured and what your family system might be like and what your family and friends expect of you, there sometimes is a battle between all of that and the direction that the Most High wants your steps to go in. But your family should not determine where you walk. It's the Most High that directs your steps and determines where you should go. And if you are not free to walk in the path the Most High is directing you to walk in, then you are not free to live in and express your destiny. That's quite a predicament. Because freedom now is going to be a part of destiny. That's why even when you look at the nation of the Most High that he has chosen in the Scriptures, He's saying basically all kinds of changes and blessings are going to come after the enemy gets defeated and so on. Why? Because you cannot fully live in destiny on the earth and be the nation the Most High has chosen if you are not free to do so. So he says, I will break their power. Why? Because freedom precedes the culmination, the fulfillment, and the final expression of destiny. And that final should even be taken lightly because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. But just take that as meaning where where you get to, that place you actually get to where now you can spread your wings and now the future is just unrestricted. So the Lord directeth his steps. So look at this now. I've been telling you for a while what I've realized through my studying, reading, and inner reflection, that the book, the Bible, the Torah, a book isn't where it's all at because people's steps were directed so that we can have all the spiritual teachings to draw on, even though we're reading them and so on. But the the early people, the ancient peoples, their steps would have been directed by the Creator before anyone had a book. Just think of that for yourself. Let's run back to the book of Psalms. So, Psalm chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. But know that the Lord hath set apart... Him that is godly, and set apart there, that means to be distinct, marked out, be separated. So, remember earlier I said, even your family system or the country you're born in, you know, and the the religion you are used to and so on. But know that the Lord has set him apart that is godly for himself. So how can someone lock you in a religion that was created a few hundred years ago and so on? Or even a thousand years ago or more? The Lord had set him apart, marked that one that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Remember I said you have to be honest in your heart with the Most High. So a lot of people, too many people, like I did for years in Christianity, too many people, and like I did for a little bit in Hebrew Israelite religion, too many people are having relationship with God through a congregation. They're not trying to know God for themselves. 
But standing on and sin not, which means have your own relationship with God. Be honest with him for yourself. Don't be honest through the teachings of your group. Don't be honest through the church bylaws. Don't be honest through what your camp believes. Be honest in your heart to the Most High, toward the Most High, for yourself. Then you use your group for some kind of support functions and so on that they use, that they have, and that they provide, and be a part of it if you want, and so on, but know the Most High for yourself. Standing on, sin not, commune with your heart upon your bed, and be still. So now I told you people didn't have a book originally, but yet they still knew the Lord. So now it says here, the book itself is telling you that that would have to be true, because it says here, Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Because when you are still and you are meditating or you're just being still in the presence of the Most High, you're just being still in your own presence. Then he says, commune with your own heart. It's not always picking up the phone to call a pastor or sending an email to your camp teacher and so on. Commune with your own heart upon your bed. It means speak to yourself. Think within yourself. Talk to yourself. With your own heart. That means he's telling you that's where you're going to find the answers that you really need for your destiny. I would put it that way at least. Because see, when you ask your pastor, like when I was just a small boy, I asked my pastor a lot of questions after Sunday service and he would answer me on the spot as much as possible. Once in a while I would ask something and he would say, I'll check it out and I'll get back to you next week. And I was just a small boy, I was like 10, 11 years old, I was just joined the church, just got saved and so on, baptized as a little boy. But I was so eager, I wanted to know the Most High so much, and didn't know that, that again, I was in destiny at 10 years old, 11 years old, shaking the pastor's hand. He used to stand at the front of the church after the service every Sunday and shake hands until he got older and he was too old, too long, because our church was like the headquarters church in Jamaica, and um, like we'd see a lot of churches, like 100 people or so, 200. There are a few big churches. Ours was one of those. So in our organization, we had like one and a half thousand people, I think we could hold in there. And then we had overflow as well. We had other building that we set up next door, run the speaker there and so on. So our church was one of the larger churches and we were the headquarters church. So we got too tired after a while and whatever. But when I was younger, he would stand there and I would just ask him questions and I didn't know until now that I was in destiny. Every question I asked my pastor at that time, and he never looked at me like, he's so young, I can't bother answering his question. I'm not going to take any time to search out that and so on, to answer him. He's just a little boy. No, he gave me the time. He gave me the time. I would drive around sometimes with my pastor, not often, but whenever it happened. I can remember this one summer, I spent a lot of time with him, um, talking and so on, and even at the Bob Marley funeral in Jamaica, that very day of the funeral, my pastor and I was just a little boy. I think at that point I was probably 14 or 15 years old. 14 or 15, I don't know. 14 years old, maybe. And um, we got stuck in halfway tree in Kingston. The, the big procession, the funeral for Bob Marley, Right, right when Bob Marley died and I was in the car with him, it was summer holidays, so there was no school and I was with him at the church and then he took me around because we were talking some more and so on. And uh, we got stuck and he was wondering what's going on. And then he said, it's it's the funeral, Bob Marley funeral. So we got stuck. But but even then, like I was searching, asking him so many questions, we, we you know, like I, I was always that kind of person wanting to seek and ask. I wanted to understand what the Bible was about. I was looking for God and so on. And I didn't know until now that all those questions was just, they were just destiny moments. That's why I told you earlier, destiny is not a place you're getting to. You are in it every day. And so you must make the appropriate choices, the matching choices that line up with your destiny. And, and, and it says here, the most I will direct his steps, the one that is set apart and that is godly, the most I will direct his steps. His steps are ordered by the Lord ordered and that's what the most I was doing I was flowing in destiny at that time as a small boy when I was asking questions I was finding whoever could answer my questions because the most I was leading me I was in destiny moving and wanted to know more so I was in destiny so I was in destiny at the time because to try to 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 get more 
of the, the fire of the word in me that was just destiny right there. Because seeking is a part of your destiny. So I was in destiny even as a small boy. So commune with your own heart. Ultimately, that's where the answers are. Psalm chapter 77, verse 5 to 6. Again it says here, I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. So he's going way back now. Like I said, before books were available, there was no Bible, there was no Torah written. Verse 6, I call to remembrance, so he's going back to ancient times, and he calls to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. How can his spirit, he see, he, he's looking back to how the ancients did it. That's why he said, I consider the days and the years of ancient times. And he realized that in ancient times, people seeking wisdom will just go up out into the forest or go up on a hill and lay there until nightfall and then look up at the moon and the stars and wonder what's up there and they seek and searching. And then they became the wise men, the men of wisdom, the teachers in ancient times. But they never read a book. It was just in their heart as they looked up in the sky and wondered who put all of this up there. And the answers came. So he says, I'm going back to how they did it in the years of ancient times, the years, the days of old. And, and he said, I commune with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search. How can his spirit make diligent search while he is communing and speaking with his own heart? It is because the information, the knowledge is inside the heart. It is not in your book. It is not in the mouth of your teacher. It is inside of your heart. So that's why while he was communing and speaking to his own heart, this, that, and the other, and he's saying to his own heart, and what's this God about? What does he want from me? Or where should I go? What's my next step in this life? Blah, blah, blah. As he said those things to his own heart, his spirit made diligent search within his own heart and found the answers. The answers are inside you. Just like if the Most High programmed your steps and ordered your steps, He marked out every step you should take to get there. Where you should take the next step. Because if He wants you to take the next step right there, then He'll lead you right here in front of it. So when you take the next step, you are stepping in the other spot you wanted to step in. So, but if He is ordering your steps and he has programmed the steps of destiny into your mind, into your heart, into your will, into your very muscles of your legs. You have been designed, made to walk toward God. You have been set up to walk in destiny. Don't doubt yourself any longer. And sometimes some, some teachers teach you, and it sounds like they're awesome teachers, but they're teaching you to be sure that you are weak. That's why they keep giving you garbage over and over, over and over. Because they do not want you to be strong. Like Nietzsche said, it is a conspiracy of the goats to tell the sheep that it is wicked to be strong. So they teach you nonsense to keep you where you are. That's why you don't make it there. I remember there was a man in this church I went to years ago, the, uh, one of the last churches I went to in the Christian church. This man is older now, losing his hair and everything. And he wanted to be in ministry so bad, but couldn't get a chance because the pastor didn't want to, blah, blah, blah. And they kept him waiting. And 20 years he's waiting. And now he's getting older now. And he's filled with so much regrets. Because he's waiting for the pastor to approve him, to approve his steps of destiny. Well, if he believed the Most High had programmed the, the, the destiny in him and ordered his steps and made his steps aligned with the destiny he had for him, then he would have trusted in the Most High. But he was trusting in man because the man that was the pastor at every church he went was teaching him in ways that made sure he did not walk in destiny. Instead of being empowered, you are becoming weaker and weaker, more angry, more disappointed. As the years go on, 
because you are sitting, sad to say to you, but more than happy to deliver it, the wrong teachers. You are sitting under the wrong teachers. Hear me, sir, hear me, lady. You are sitting under the wrong teachers in the wrong group, in the wrong setting. And your destiny feels in your own heart stagnated because you refuse to move and do according to what you feel in your heart when the Bible is telling you that your own heart has the answers I communed with my own heart and my spirit made diligent search because the stuff is in there like when you're searching in a certain room for your keys you normally leave it here but you can't so you go and search in another room where you think you left it because you think you were in that room last but you don't normally leave your key in there, but you just think I was in there last. And I, I think I remember partly bringing the keys in there because I was going for something. So you go and check. Then when you find the key, what? Because your mind is telling you it just might be in that room. Why will your mind move your whole body to go there if it don't think it's there? I might have left it in the garage. I wonder if I dropped it in the garbage when I was taking out the garbage. You go back and you rip up the garbage in the in the garage. Because you think it is there. Well, commune with your heart. That's the focus here, the heart. So when the diligent search happens, it happens in the heart because the mind thinks that the answer is in the heart. How can the mind think that the answer is in the heart if God did not place the answers in your heart? But you keep looking for it in a book. You keep looking for it in the mouth of your teachers. It's not even in my mouth. Your answer is in you. I'm just like the guide, giving guidance, like other people have given guidance to me. Like you're searching in the room for the stuff you're looking for or in the storage room and so on, and you just got lots of boxes, lots of stuff on you. You know, you need to dig out that box way over there to get to it because it must be in that box. And so you lean on the wall to what with one hand and you stretch and lean with the other hand. The one hand on the wall is just for support to stretch and reach over to the other box. Well, I'm just like the supporting wall you lean on just to help you stretch and reach and dig some more to find the stuff. I am not your answer. The answer is the Most High's word that's placed in you. Failure is not your default. The word of the Most High is his instruction, his deliverance in your life, his destiny in your life, which becomes your destiny also, that is what's inside of you to guide you and to lead you. This is the anatomy of change. You can move into change if you trust the Most High and do all the stuff that comes to your heart. You don't have to wait for somebody all the time to tell you yes, 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 yes. You should know yes you should know yes. That means you could never have been Adam. You could never have been Eve because there were a lot of firsts that they had to deal with. So the Most I could never have trusted you to be Adam or Eve because after he gave them his instructions, they would have had to decide, is this a yes, is this a go? Is this a yes or is this a no for, for what I want to do today? When I get up tomorrow, what will I do? When I explore, when I name the animals, when I go over there, how, 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 how will I do this? How will I accomplish that? How will I whatever? They had to have the answers in them to explore and to move on the earth. I want to get high when I'm exploring earth. I'm Adam, I'm new. I'm Eve, I'm new. How are we going to explore and see what's way down there? Well, this little thing right here, we call it a hill today, a small hill or a rock, I should say. If they want to see farther, they can just jump up on it. Well, can I jump? All I do is just lift my foot for high enough for a regular step. But can I get higher? Can my body jump? I'm new on earth. Nobody's here to tell me. How will he know? Because his spirit inside him will search and his mind will tell him, yes, you can jump. Get down a little bit lower and shoot right up with some a burst of energy so his his mind will tell him yes you can jump and i'm telling you 
if you are willing to trust the Most High and trust what's in your heart, yes, you can jump. I don't care how long it takes you. Yes, you can jump over that hurdle. I don't care how difficult it is, what length of time, what it costs you. You can jump over that. You can get there to your destiny. So now, I got about three more verses here. Jeremiah 31 and verse 34. No, let's do 33 and 34. So remember I told you originally there was no book and that you can search in your own heart, communicate, commune with your heart, you know, and the answers are inside and so on as you trust in the Most High, as you meditate and trust in the Most High. Meditate on what's inside of you. What's the interior unseen part of you like? Who put it there? Who created it? And so on. And what is its source? You call it your spirit, your soul, whatever you call it. But now, he says, commune with yourself. Why? Because the answer is inside. Jeremiah 31, 33, and 34. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. That's why the man David said, I will commune with my heart and my bed, and my spirit made diligent search. Why? Because there is supposed to be something on the inside that can be searched out. But I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, not write it in a book. God don't write books and print books. You and I write and print books and read books like that. But what will be read is the heart that God wrote on. That's why he said I will communicate with my own heart. Why? Because God puts a set of instruction there. And that's why Job said that he communicates with man through dreams, visions, and so on, through dreams in the night. Because he's putting a set of instruction in there so you know where to step next and so on. You can figure it out as time goes on. So I'll put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. I will write it in their hearts because that's where I want them to most read it from. People can come along later on in a thousand years and write and print books and they can read those books, that's fine. But as long as they keep reading the one I wrote in their heart, they will be just fine. Verse 34, and they shall teach no more every man, because you see, they use the external book to bind you like you are a slave, but, but the book that's on the inside, the writing on the inside of the heart, that one is about freedom from the Creator. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them. So the future people of us that get born of us are children when we're delivered and so on. They're not going to have this one book that they are just depending on for their life. Why? Because it's going to be in their heart and nobody's going to be teaching them, Know the Lord, Know the Lord, because they will be intimate with the Most High in their own heart for themselves. It's not a book that will bring intimacy to them. It's communicating with their own heart. That's where they're going to find the Most High. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 1 and verse 6. I communed with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. And it goes on. And so he says he gets experience, wisdom, knowledge, and so on. So you see what he did? He did just what his father was saying. I communed with my own heart. And then he tells himself, I am come to great estate. And that's how you and I have to do. we got to communicate with our own heart and tell ourselves what our future will be by telling ourselves what's going to happen to us right now. Because that's how future is created, is telling yourself something right now is happening. Telling yourself, it is happening to me right now. Because that's what I'm learning. And that's the changes I'm seeing. And you don't wonder about the day of small things or whatever like the Bible says, right? He's telling himself, I am come to great estate and what? He did come to great estate because he communicated with himself and he spoke what he found out, what was searched out in his heart. His heart had it written in there from the Creator. You are a person of great estate. So he rehearsed that and communicated that to his own self. And eventually he came to great estate. You got to speak to yourself. That's why I said, it don't matter what, you can come out. 
if you tell yourself you can come out. Because, yeah, we can get our last verse here now from the book of Proverbs. And thank you for listening um, to my lesson. This is the Anatomy of Change series. And this lesson is walking with God. And I really do believe we can move into changes in our lives and realize that we are in destiny and will continue in destiny if we are honest in our walk with the Most High, honest in our hearts. Thanks again for listening. Um, Proverbs, no, yes, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 1. So this is the last verse. The preparations of the heart in men and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Dwell on that one for yourself. Really. Take some time to think of that. The preparations of the heart in man. I told you he already ordered your steps. He mapped out and arranged the very steps. So when you walk into this situation in life and walk into that job and walk into whatever and you walk into that stuff that you call a bad experience and then you walk into this one that you call a good experience, you walk into that thing that looked like a curse and then you walk into this that looked like a blessing and then you walk. The preparations were ordered, were designed, were orchestrated in your life. David was telling you that throughout his life, in his story. He moved from stage to stage, like I said earlier. Joseph was saying, look, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. To save, to save my souls. It was orchestrated by the Most High. The preparations were set up by the Most High. And the answer of the tongue. So even the answer of the tongue. Sometimes you're like, oh goodness, that's going to damn well change my life now. Oh man, like why did I say that? This I'm done for. The only part you need to take out is I'm done for. Because your steps are ordered, so you're not going to be done for. No matter what you go through, you can come through. Because your steps were arranged down to even the very answer of the tongue, of the godly one, the one that's honest with the Most High. The answer of his tongue and the preparations in his heart when you decide in your heart, what will I do? What's my next step? What am I going to do now? The preparation of the heart. If you would just be still, like he said, communicate with your own heart and be still. He added the part to be still because that's how you're going to hear the voice now. When you relax yourself in the midst of anxiety, you communicate with yourself and you say, I need to do something. I need to make a change now. I need to, whatever, I need to make a response to this stuff in my life and whatever. But then you don't go on to being still. So, so, so the psalmist said, be still and know that I am God. You don't move, most people don't move on to the stillness part to meditate and to see the answer come to them. So they retain the anxiety when they come out of that questioning and communicating with their heart. They don't stay for the stillness. But the answer of the tongue, the way you should work it out, that's the answer, the way you should deal with the situation that's from the Lord. The Most High has decided your destiny. You should decide it as well. He has decided this is your destiny. You should decide that you're going to walk in it. Anatomy of change. Be honest with the Most High in your heart. Be honest with the Most High in your heart.